If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer the question on your own before listening on. We'll go ahead and draw a picture of this sphere that contains a uniform positive charge distribution. So here is the sphere, and we have marked the radius of the sphere with a capital R. Now, according to Gauss's law, the electric field produced by a uniform charge distribution that is in the shape of a sphere is given by the following equation. So we have the electric field equaling the total charge divided by 4 pi epsilon times the radius of the charge sphere cubed, and then multiplied by this second radius, which we've colored in blue. Now that second radius would correspond to any radius that would be extended out from the center. So for example, if we drew a line that was only that long, and we mark that with a lowercase r, we could use this equation to determine the electric field strength anywhere along this surface right here, whose radius is lowercase r. And this equation holds as long as that distance, lowercase r, is less than or equal to uppercase r. It turns out that when the distance goes beyond uppercase r, then the electric field would equal this equation right here. And what's interesting is that the graphs of these two equations would look somewhat different from one another. And so, for example, if we took the first equation and we plotted the electric field against the distance r, then we would expect to see a linear shape since, according to the equation, the electric field is proportional to r to the first power. On the other hand, in the second equation, if we graph the electric field against r, we would actually see a parabolic curve that is sort of concave up like this. And that's because the electric field is inversely proportional to the radius squared. So it has that curved shape and it kind of slopes downward. And it's interesting because the graph that they give us takes on both of these shapes. We have the linear portion, which is right here, and then we have this parabolic portion, which is right here. What we want to do is actually select this point right here. Now that's the point at which the curve transitions from being linear to the parabolic shape. And if we look at these inequalities over here, that would be the point at which our distance, lowercase r, is equal to the distance, uppercase r. In other words, at this point right here, we could say that r is equal to capital R. And since that's the case, we're going to select the first equation, since this equation holds whenever r is either less than or equal to capital R. So now that we know that lowercase r is equal to uppercase r, we can substitute that into this equation here. So we can actually take out the lowercase r, fill in uppercase r, and then algebraically this factor of r would cancel with a factor of r down here, so this would become r squared. And so we can see from the graph that the radius of the sphere is 2 centimeters, or 2 times 10 to the minus 2 meters. So we're going to plug that in for the radius r, and then the electric field at this point is simply the value of es, which was stated in the question to be 5 times 10 to the 7th. So we've gone ahead and filled in those known values, and then we'll solve for the amount of charge, or lowercase q, by multiplying both sides of this equation by 4 pi epsilon times that radius squared. We'll do it on the left side, as well as on the right side. It will cancel out on the right hand side, and then when we punch this into our calculators, we should get approximately 2.22 times 10 to the minus 6th coulombs, and this becomes the correct answer for the amount of charge on the sphere.